<laughs> I'm getting better at it. Okay, so welcome back to Royal Club. Thank you for joining us from around the world. Thank you, thank you that you are always here with us, very faithfully, diligently. And we have, of course, Mark with us all the way from Canada. And we have um, Alexander and Frida with us from Holland and all the many zillions of people who are sneaking up and, and uh, joining us, but they are not joining us live because they are working and we are in different time zones. So okay. I am going, last time, of course, we are, we have talked about 10 life or probably more than 10 life advices. And we are going to continue that series because it was so popular and people just, we had a wonderful feedback from people from around the world and they loved it because they are practical advices. They are something that's easily, um, people, could, people could adjust to it easily and very useful ones. So we would like to continue that. Um, series and today tonight my time night <laughs> European night <laughs> it's Mark's turn to give us a lot of wonderful life advice so Mark take it away okay thank you so much um, so to begin with I just wanted to say God is good God is faithful that's number one and we need to remember that and um, I just wanted to share a little bit. I'm going to read from a book. Uh, it's a poem, um, but it's actually lyrics to a song, but it sounds more like a poem. I'll be reading out of it twice today. But I wanted to say that there was a season where um, I was finding scripture floating around on the grass by my feet multiple times, just pieces of paper with scripture on it. Wow. And this just happened for an entire season. It was just not uncommon for me to just find scripture on printed on paper. The wind would blow it past my feet and I would just pick it up and read it and so on. And uh, but then also I found a book. I was I it was in the winter and it was deep snow and I was walking along uh, at work and my foot bumped against something and I picked it up and it was. Uh, this book here wow. and, it, and it's a book of uh, um, songs uh, and poems and things and um, I thought it was quite pre precious and so to me that's a real personal a personal nudge um, from God just for me to recognize he's always there he never leaves Did us. Did you or... just find it recently or a long time ago? Uh, it was about a year and a half wow. ago, maybe or so, something like that. Yeah. So, but it was in the snow. It wasn't this year. So it had to at least have been last year. Yeah. But I think, I think it might have been. So maybe even two years ago. But wow. yeah. Um. So <clears throat> there is a rhyme and a rhythm to this. So I, I hopefully I read this correctly. Um. God in tender love sent his only son to redeem and set you free. Um, oh, receive him now and you shall rejoice in his light and liberty. He will give you life and a living hope that forever will endure. Those who come to him will not be deceived for his promises are sure. Do not close your heart to the Son of God, since he died your soul to win. Shed his precious blood that you might be saved from the guilt and power of sin. Oh, be reconciled to your dearest friend. He was smitten for your sake. Let him enter in you will know his peace and the joys of heaven partake. He is mm -hmm. waiting, waiting patiently. Do not bid your Lord depart. He is longing, longing, oh so earnestly to possess your willing heart. So that's one of many from this book that I believe God gave me. So, Life advice, God should be first in our lives at all times. We need to recognize that. Yeah. Um, but 
along with that, we in a in a practical sense and a practical way, we need to be thankful. Thankfulness brings a peace and a contentment and a joy. The opposite is also true. Being thankless or dissatisfied can bring anger, resentment, restlessness, and jealousy. Um, I really saw the jealousy part in this one because if we are not thankful for what we have, it's very easy to be jealous of what others have. And that can really lead to ugliness. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't look up the scripture, but off the top of my head, it talks about, I believe in Proverbs, talks about jealousy. And that there is, I think it says something like there is no evil as dark and as bad as jealousy. Yes. And I believe, if I'm correct, would you agree that that was um, uh, when you think of Adam and Eve uh, mm -hmm. and their children, the first two and one killed the other, that it was jealousy? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yes? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So thankfulness brings peace, contentment, and joy. And that would be what we want to fo focus on. Do not judge people. Judging others can lead to all sorts of trouble. When we judge people, we are assuming that we are correct in our conclusions. This can easily lead to slander or giving someone a bad name or reputation based on lies or incorrect information. So does that mean that we cannot judge? Yes, we can. We don't judge the person. We judge actions. Mm -hmm. We often know right from wrong. Uh, my dad was very blunt. He would say... Um, he would, he would never call us stupid. So he didn't say that to us about us. But he would say, I did not I did not raise stupid children, so why are you doing stupid things? So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was my dad's way of uh, direction and correction. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the point here and what I'm trying to say is we can, we do know that there is right from wrong, and we should recognize that, and we should judge those things according to God's truth and His, His, His word. But we don't judge the person that themselves. Why? We don't know why they're doing those things. We don't know their heart. We don't know those kinds of things. God does, and so we do need to be. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, I thought maybe there was a, a nod. There. Objection. Anybody have any objections? <laughs> <laughs> I just I just want to be sure. So uh but yeah, so but in my experience I have found this to be very true. And so yeah, to point a finger at somebody's face and 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 say you're a bad person because that no, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. But to say the action that you just did you you cutting me off in the street uh i had the right of way that that was wrong yes yeah, so it was wrong and so you can judge the action um when you're not sure about something never would you say that the person was not polite in this case polite could you say that that this was a wrong action to cut in line and, yeah. and therefore, therefore, the person is not polite. Could you say that? Yes, you could say that. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. And so we know that being polite is the correct way to be. As an example, like you can look at love, right? And so what is love? And so if you look at 1 Corinthians 13, it says, love is not rude. Mm -hmm. As an example. So if you're being rude, you're not being you're not walking in love, yeah. Walking in love, and God is love, and we're created in His image, and we're supposed to walk in love. It doesn't mean that we're we're an evil person. It just means that we're not following in love as we should be. Ask when you're not sure. 
When we think we know something but never follow up to be sure, we might end up believing wrong information and wrong information can lead to a lot of wasted time. If we have to double back on our actions because we've been believing something and doing something that we have found out is wrong, I mean, we do that throughout life, we do find, but we want to do it quicker so that we're not wasting time. And so if we have, let's say, a thought go through our head and never follow up on that, but just start to believe it because it went through our head and we find out five years later that that thought was wrong, how much, yeah. how much time have we wasted with that, you know? Um, do could not... you perhaps could, could you perhaps give an example, like in the other case you made the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see what I've been wrong about before. Um, or anybody else who has an example. Just I actually, top. I actually have a good example. Um, when I was being raised uh, as a young child, we were taught that women had a certain role and men had a certain role, mm. and women are supposed to be submissive to their men in a way that the man rules the house and rules over the woman. And I have learned that that is not correct. And Annette is very happy about that. <laughs> um, I, I was uh, I was thinking that uh, when you said it's, it's better to ask than yeah. to ask you. Right. And walk in that wrong assumption. Yes. I was thinking that maybe you wrote a letter to someone or wrote a few lines to someone and the person never never responds. And then you say, okay, I'm not going to talk to a person anymore because the person is rude. Right. This can happen to anyone. Turns sure. out five years later, somehow you learn that the person never even received your message. Mm -hmm. You see Correct. what I'm saying? So, so easily, you know, Correct. people walk into these traps yes. and then a relationship, a relationship ends or you know severe's really but the thing is it, it, it was based on a wrong assumption right it, mm. correct yeah that's a much much simpler one certainly yes and that and that can really lead to a lot of resentment and hurt if if yes. we, if we really if, allow if you're rejected it. yeah you feel rejected you have bad thoughts about the person why would she treat me this way blah 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 and turns out the person never received yes Yes, that's actually a very good example. Thank you. Uh, do not worry. Mm. Worry is simply uncertainty um, because we have not considered the outcomes. We we worry because we don't, maybe we don't see a way out of a si situation. And so... I said, plan rather than worry. If you are worried about something, take the time to consider all possible outcomes and how you can and will respond. Um, there are a lot of people I'm noticing that are worried and afraid about all kinds of different things. And they're, they ask the what if, questions but they have no answers to them so mm -hmm. what if i'm you know let's say a person speeds uh with their vehicle they're instead of going 100 kilometers per hour they're going 110 kilometers per hour and a person beside you is like why are you going so fast i'm so worried i'm going to get into an accident i'm going 10 kilometers more over the speed limit and i have full control yeah but i don't feel safe i don't feel you know and they they can start to worry so then a person say so okay so what are you worried about what do you think is going to happen why are you so afraid of this why are you worrying about this mm -hmm. and so then a person can if, if if you can really stop and reason through this you can get through it so much easier and start to realize that mm, that fear was not justified really it was just you never took the time to seriously consider why you're so afraid, you know? And so just simply do not worry, and but instead of, instead find 
answers to what you're worried about and why. Yeah. And and well, uh, I think people can be worried when they know exactly why. Okay. For instance, I'm I'm worried I'm going to lose my job. I'm going I'm 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 worried that I won't be able to pay my rent. Right. These are things people deal with every day. True. So they, they they can exactly pinpoint why they worried. Yeah. And because there's uncertainty. I think yeah. worry is about uncertainty. That's right. Like I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going right. to happen to my country. Who's going to be the president? Which party is going to win? Which right. way is certain decision on court is going to be? Yeah. You know, things like that. Or I, I'm worried that my children will grow up stupid because they go to a certain school and they feel yeah. their, you know, their mind be nonsense and you know yeah. things like this. So I, I, you know, in my opinion, it seems to me that uh, just because people know exactly what they're afraid of doesn't really lessen the worry. No, no. And so that's why I said, if you're worried about something, take the time to consider all possible outcomes and how you will respond. Yeah. No? Money is something that people and sometimes even Christians constantly worried about. Right. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Usually not worried about that I'm going to have too much money in the future. It's mm -hmm. more like I'm not going to have too much money <laughs> in the future, isn't it? So right. it kind of goes the, uh, the the one way, but then again, of course, like you said, put God first, and and He would be your response. Like, yes. not my job is my supplier, but my God is my supplier. So, right. go back to to point number one all the time. Yes, yes, yes. Because sometimes your worry is justified, so to speak, because your your country is in trouble. For instance, you know, it's right. it's been mismanaged. Uh, people are in the government stealing money. And it's this very, it's possible that it's justified. I'm talking to the audience out there. Yeah. But uh, the point is, you don't put your trust in your money. You don't put your trust in your country, in your country's economy. Mm -hmm. But you put your trust in God because that's the only one who is never going to fail you. That's true. Because you can have a lot of money, but then what about if the money uh devalues <laughs> then you're going to have a lot of money and it happened in the past like yep. you have a lot of money but you still not able to use it because yep. that means you know it just verse nothing from one day to the next That's i lived right. in um in argentina for a while and and uh we had a lot of money in the bank and from one day to the next it devalued so we had a lot of money still but it right. was worth nothing and right. not just us but a lot of people so yeah. it, I'm not saying it will happen. I'm just saying that this would be one of the reasons that people might be worried. And I think it is justified. But the point is, don't put your trust in your money or right. in your government or in the economy because you are, you belong to God and he's the source of your supplies. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he has mm -hmm. to be. And then I said, share. So this is point number six, share. Being mm -hmm. selfish only cuts you off from people and from God's provision and favor. Give and it shall be given unto you. And that's what the word says. Um, okay. And so, you know, we, we have young children or young grandchildren in our house. And so there has been a lot of uh, teaching of sharing and, um, the other day, actually, so we have a, a nine-year-old, uh, I believe six-year-old, and then a two-year-old, two-and-a-half. And the six- and two-and-a-half-year-old, um, I've been trying to teach them to make their own food and to share. And uh, they didn't really want to <laughs> uh, because that means work, right? So oh, okay. I, said, I said, look, like, we don't have to make everything for you. You, you're old enough. You can, you, you know how to make things now and so on. So the six-year-old the other day made herself a sandwich. Then the young one wanted to eat too. So she put her sandwich down, cooked an egg in the frying pan for her, for the young one, gave it to her and went back to her sandwich. That is beautiful. And I said, yes. <laughs> I mean, even the fact that a six-year-old can make an omelet, that's wonderful. Yep. And I expect them to. I mean, it. 
how hard is that, right? But they just need to. Well, for a six-year-old, I mean, yeah. I, I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very good. That's beautiful. Yeah, I push them. <laughs> good for <Yeah>. you. <laughs> You're a great coach. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, point number seven. Speaking of me just laughing, laugh. Good. The Bible like says that. laughter is medicine. Yes. And um, there's all sorts of things I could say about that. Many of us have heard, but maybe not everyone has, that it has been proven medically that if a person laughs, they can actually laugh themselves healthy. Wow. So yes. if a person laughs, it is, it is genuinely medicine. It is good health to you. Oh, yes. Not everybody is in a situation where laughter comes easy. Mm -hmm. There are many people who are in a hard, hard place. Yes. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so mm -hmm. turning to him and finding uh, peace in his presence and joy in his presence can bring you laughter. Um, the innocence of children uh, and their playfulness and their laughter can be very contagious. Um, mm -hmm. The song of a bird can be very can can be very um, bring joy as well, which can cause laughter. And so, in this situation, I'm just going to say, Lord, I, th <laughs> I thank you that anyone who's in a situation where laughter doesn't come easy, that you bring laughter <laughs> to them. That you fill their heart with laughter. Mm -hmm. Point number eight: Encourage <laughs> one another. Yeah. Build up people around you, and they in turn will build you up as well, and it will be reciprocal. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that we are to encourage one another, and we are to edify one another, to build one another up, and. There's a big difference when a person is critical, when a person is maybe even mean, versus encouraging and edifying and building uh, one up. Um, it can be uh, a, 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 a complete different atmosphere from building up, because really criticize, criticizing is tearing down rather than building than building up. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important to recognize that and to practice that. If it doesn't, if it doesn't come easy, uh, practice it. Be intentional about saying something positive. And when the uh, the thought comes to say something negative, shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's something that's something that my mom would always say. Shut your mouth. Actually, you know? that's gonna be one of the points. Yeah. Yeah. Be quiet rather than <laughs> <Be quiet. laughs> yeah. because Fact, I have but... noticed that you know I have noticed that you mostly people make a mistake when they talk too much, isn't it? Right. Usually Correct. when you keep quiet, less right. of a problem. Yeah. It's usually when you say something you shouldn't have. Yeah. Isn't it? Just listen to the proverbs. Go through the entire book of Proverbs, maybe even on audio, and you'll realize. It says that exactly. When a person talks too much, it doesn't take long and they're going to say something wrong and get themselves into trouble. Exactly. But it also says that a person who remains quiet, though they may not be wise, they appear as wise. It's true. Because of their, because <laughs> of their silence. So, Number nine. And this one here actually is something that, a revelation that God had given me quite some time ago and i i was very uh embarrassed at sharing mistakes and so i said here share your mistakes but focus on the solutions mm, um, i like that yeah and um because i was very embarrassed at sharing my mistakes and even admitting that i had made mistakes um but he said to me one day he says did you know that by you admitting your mistakes and sharing them it frees others up 
to allow themselves to make mistakes and then look for solutions as well. Mm -hmm. And so I said here, if you are always right and never wrong, immature people around us will often feel ashamed and embarrassed when they make mistakes. By sharing our mistakes, we allow others the freedom to make mistakes and find solutions as well. And yeah. also that could that could be make people feel like they are inadequate, like they are less than, isn't True. it? Like True. they would never come up to that measure of that leader because of course the leader would never make a mistake, of course, yeah. uh, staff admittedly. <laughs> Yeah. And the leader is always right. So by by default, they have to be always wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So immediately it gives a, you know, it encourages a toxic environment, whether yeah. it's a work environment or even worse, if it's a Christian environment, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. within a family unit. Yeah. If the father is always right, then consequently mm -hmm. everybody else has to be always wrong, isn't right. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that along the same lines, because I'm just thinking like, where would that position everybody else if there's one person in the family you know so you know ideally the father who's always right mm -hmm. then of course if anybody I mean nobody would dare to say anything different because they by default they have to be always wrong yeah so that's and if you imagine children growing up in this environment that would be absolutely devastating for the future yeah yeah it's very true yeah, and I mean, children make mistakes all the time, and we see them make mistakes. And uh, if we're doing our job properly as uh, a parent or a guardian, um, we are encouraging them that that mistake, you know, making it a learning moment, um, mm -hmm. teaching them different things, uh, whatever, we're, we're, we're making the best of that situation rather than pointing a finger and tearing them down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I find that mm -hmm. uh, my, my grandchildren um, are not afraid to come to me uh so that's a big sign children will not come around those who they don't trust and and so oh, on or they're afraid of yeah of course or they're or they're afraid of i'm 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 very straightforward with them um but i try never to be mean uh and so uh i i'm never mean but sometimes it can come across as a little loud and a little sure, uh, maybe forward you know <laughs> yeah so i'm just you know, so, but anyway, but yeah, so it's, I, I think uh, I must be doing something right for them to come. And if I go sit Absolutely. down, like, if I sit down on the couch, they want to sit beside me. So that's a good thing. The very <laughs> number mm -hmm. 10, when it comes to relationships, we cannot demand others to be what we are not willing to be ourselves. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. I believe it was Creflo Dollar who said that one time, he said um, that uh, either a man or a woman would come and say, I want this in my spouse, in my future mm -hmm. spouse. And he says, okay, you want them to be rich? Are you, are you willing to be the person who knows how to handle that kind of money the same way that person does are you are you willing to be kind and generous as the person as you're expecting that person to be as well and so i said if we expect someone to be clean and tidy but we're messy we're putting an unfair expectation on the other person this is not the same as being different or opposite to someone else when two people recognize differences about one another and accept mm -hmm. them, the relationship is united in sharing a common quality or goal. When expectations are forced upon another person, they enter a disagreement and are in conflict. And I don't think a person can expect a relationship like that to last. So... We cannot demand others to be what we are not willing to be ourselves. 
Number 11, so I did have a, just a few more than 10. Good. <laughs> I'm very intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting as I do one, it kind of makes me think of another. And then I. It write, does, oh, doesn't it? Yeah, You're in yeah, the yeah. Just, yeah. Wonderful. Be kind and courteous, open doors for one another. Mm -hmm. um, at, at my my place of work, um, there is a man uh, whose name is Richard. I'll say his name. I know he he wouldn't mind me saying that. Uh, who had quite some time ago just started opening doors. When you would come close, he would open the door for you. And we all started to do that. That's beautiful. And we've just we just keep doing that. In fact, there's one particular spot. There's two doors that you have to go through. You go through one, then you immediately turn right, and there's a second one. And so the first one there opens the door, holds it open for the next one, and then the next one opens that door and holds That's it open. Beautiful. For you. Wow. You so guys have some bad and, it's just, <laughs> and every time, every time without fail, we say thank you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it that alone. It's actually quite amazing that that act and the verbally saying thank you, just that alone, really creates an atmosphere yeah. of kindness. Yes, of, respect. Uh, of respect, thank you, yeah. And really changes things <laughs> and, and will often continue in other things just to say thank you. Can you pass yes. me this? Okay, thank you. It, it it's a big a big difference i mean i think all of us have been in, in in environments where people are not very kind and courteous and and it's a kind of a ugly environment or at least it can be anyway de depending on the people but it can be kind of ugly so it's be kind and courteous and open doors for one another i love that you mentioned sorry sorry yeah now we just i was just going to say uh, there was a time of course we i think we've all kind of know where there was uh, groups of women who, if you opened a door for them out of courtesy, would start to tear you down, especially as a guy, they would start to tear you down. And it's like, what? Why? I'm <laughs> just trying have to be you, Have you actually experienced any of this? Yes. yes. But you know what? It was a long time ago. And it's it always kind of stuck with me because the person was very, was very mean, actually, about it. And so I can get it myself. <laughs> right and i'm like well and i'm thinking to myself, what did you say what did you respond well i was actually kind of i was so shocked i didn't know what to say yeah. i was just kind of stunned but i thought to myself i know that i thought to myself in the moment i i know you can get it yourself yeah that's that's not the point the point is i'm opening it for you out of courtesy and kindness yeah. so anyway i but what did you respond anything at the time no Oh. You know what? And and in fact, I don't like I remember the thoughts. I don't remember the action. But knowing myself, <clears throat> I probably just held the door open and waited for her to go in. And yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Just if it takes me 10 minutes, I'll just hold it open for 10 minutes. And I just won't say anything until you finally get in there. Like, hello. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. but you know what? And so be, that stuck with me. And there was a time where I would kind of hesitate. And I would kind of stand back and let everybody do their thing and open the door and then I'll go when everybody's through. But now, you know what? I'll open that door and I have yeah. not had one person argue it. In fact, if they don't say anything, that's fine. But most people say thank you. Yeah. So. You know, it's these little things, you know, please, thank you. That that really just creates an atmosphere of honor, of respect, of yeah. valuing the person, valuing the little things. And I think, you know, of course, on purpose, you know, certain uh, entities like to get rid of these things. Yeah, they, and you yeah. think, oh, it's just a small thing. It's not a small thing. It's no. a big thing when somebody recognizes that you have done something that they, you didn't have to do. I, I, yeah. I obviously, I, I, uh, I grew up in a family where all the, all the, um, uh, these are gentlemanly and courteous things were taught. But uh, I don't know how these kids today are raised. But I can look at them and I can kind of guess how they were raised. Mm -hmm. more like wild animals okay yeah. and i'm not even exaggerating yeah. but it starts with little things 
And I bet that deep down inside, they know that it's not okay. They just, they, they just probably don't know how else to behave because that's all they ever saw. But, you know, it's looking at you, because I know you, you work with different age groups. Mm -hmm. So looking at your behavior, even when they don't, don't say anything, they just realize that what you're doing is the right thing that they were missing yeah. while they were yeah. growing up. So of course they're going to adjust because everybody wants to be a gentleman. Just like everybody wants to be a lady. I yeah. mean, I built a whole company on that. You guys know that. Mm -hmm. But but not everybody knows how to. That's and Royal Grace and Elegance classes are exactly about that. How to be a gentleman. <laughs> and this starts with small things that are not really small things. Because when you get to a certain you know level of society, you are expected to say please and thank you. You are mm -hmm. expected to hold doors. You are expected to not sit down until a woman sits down. Yeah. And that may be different from where whoever is coming from, wherever they're coming from. But nevertheless, that's the standard. And if you are out of that, then you're out of your league. Yeah. So these are these may be small things, but they are not small things. They are, mm -hmm. you know, small things sometimes, you know, if you if you think about a small thing, well, you know, think about um, a, a little dirt in your eye. Oh, it's just a little dirt. Don't worry about it. No, 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 no. You are going to stop whatever you're doing yeah. and you're going to get it out because if That's you right. don't, you might actually lose an eye. But That's it starts right. with a small thing, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody ever says, oh, it's just a small thing in my eye. It's fine. We can just go on and do whatever. No, you stop. Yeah. You drop everything, whatever you have in your hand, and you fix yeah. your, your attention, all your attention on yeah. your eye because you don't want that small thing to cause big problems, yeah. right? That's right. So I'm glad that you are showing a good example. Of course, I had no doubt that you are showing a good example, but you see already the 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 result and reap the harvest. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. yeah. Yes. Yes. And and even in in great gather in great gatherings, people take some some water with them and some things when the meeting is long. But if I leave my place, I always take something around my place with me to keep it away. And the people to throw it away. To throw, throw it away. Yes, to 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 throw it away yeah. in the car car garbage. Because uh -huh. I'm I'm always thinking after me they have to come people to clean, clean the, up, yeah. the, the the room. So always I take so my own stuff and if I see around is something I take it also with me because that's a little thing to honor the team for the hard work you know and, and also it shows a lot about you isn't it when you yeah. clean up after yourself even if you perhaps you don't have to it yeah. speaks a lot about you and people are watching just like it oh. speaks a lot about those people who leave their dirt around that speaks a lot about them they, yeah. that's definitely a divider that shows who's classy and who's not just like mm -hmm. with please and thank you and holding doors yeah yeah and i make my grandchildren say okay <laughs> they would walk up to me i want to play excuse me <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> you want a plate may i have a plate please yes you can i can i have a plate please what <laughs> no <laughs> no attitude too and so attitude. now it's been and i have not stopped doing it i've been so consistent that now may i have a plate please and then i say thank you for being polite yes wow. we'll get you a plate oh, wow. so i'm they will be so no. grateful for you when they grow up i hope so <laughs> i've heard that thing to them <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. number 13 mm -hmm. love god love man so we have been created in the image of god in the image and likeness of god god is love and he does that towards us we need to do love back to him but also uh i should have looked up the scripture but it says um how does it how's that worded now um you have something like you have 
uh, blessed God with your mouth, but cursed man with that same mouth. Yeah, yeah. God yeah. who created, mm -hmm. I think that's in James, uh, mm -hmm. but it was God who created your mouth. And so this should not be. Bless God and bless man as well, who was created in his image yeah. and likeness. And that's that's quite huge, actually. Uh, yes, it we is. We need to honor one another. We need to respect one another. We need to be courteous to one another, kind to one another, and so on. Um, to demonstrate that we recognize that we all are created in his image and likeness, and that it's very important to do so. Um, any comments on that one? I have one more. No? I fully agree. <laughs> <laughs> I have no objection. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the book I had previously opened. And... James, James three verse ten. Yeah. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. Right. I rather these things ought not to be. Mm. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, was that in James? James uh, three verse um, yeah. ten. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So going back to that same book again, I have. Uh, Point number 14, always be ready to share your testimony in a simple way. Mm. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So for if, if, you know, the Holy Spirit was showing me to you, even if we don't have a testimony of how Jesus has saved us if we're not saved yet as an example but we have a testimony of how we've overcome mm -hmm. something it's still important to share that kind of br bringing us back to the point that i shared earlier about that we're to it's good to um to share your failures and your solutions you know but <clears throat> i thought it was very interesting in this book how this person wrote a little poem and it's very much like my life uh and how i came to christ but for them to write that that's their story and how many else's story is the same so i'll read that it says my heart was sad and weary i had no rest within and wandered on in darkness still deeper into sin iniquity had bound me and all was dark as night. In bitterness of spirit, I longed for peace and light. I sought, uh, I sought earth's fading treasures, some lasting joy to gain. Its pleasures disappointed, I found them void and vain. Mm -hmm. Life seemed to be a failure, the joys it could impart, left but remorse and sadness and sorrow in my heart. The darkness seemed to deepen, no light, no hope was nigh. When lo, I heard the Savior, who then was passing by. In kindly tones he whispered, O soul, I died for thee and bore in my own body thy sins upon the tree. I'm glad I met with G Jesus. He bid my sins depart. He came with joy and gladness to dwell within my heart. That's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely I, beautiful. I actually quite like this book. It's uh, yeah. quite a blessing. <laughs> Who wrote that? Who wrote well, that? Well, it's actually a collection. So oh, it's, a collection. It's, not, it's not that someone wrote it necessarily, uh, sat down and wrote it, 
but it says yeah and none of the uh none of the poems are actually it it doesn't tell who wrote that that poem seriously really mm. yeah yeah wow. maybe yeah. god wrote <laughs> maybe god wrote them for you seriously yeah. but i wow. can tell you that this book um let's see here it is a compilation put together uh, and it says copyright 1987 by Pocock and Martin. Okay. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Interesting. That's yeah, mysterious. There is no, I, I know, like all Very mysterious. Are, not, are not are not named at all. Or there's no. There's I was no just wondering. I was just because I was wondering, like, how old that those forms are because of the language they use. Right. So right. I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah, it just says it was put together in in 1987, but I don't know how yeah. old Yeah, could are. be last century even. or yeah, That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially yeah. with the language. Interesting. And that was, mm -hmm. I chose those because of the simple language in them. Yeah. Some of those are like really old, old King James, like where it's wow. uh, okay. thus and thou and those and these. And these. <laughs> that's beautiful. So that is my list of of uh life advice life advices so thank you so much you're absolutely thank you so much. Yes. absolutely outstanding thank you thank as you as always thank so you. feel free to anyone to add some more life hacks mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> life you, must, hacks. you find useful in your own life <laughs> life hacks i like it you must have a wonderful life if you if you can say all these things yeah yeah. yeah absolutely yeah yeah back to um because it made me thinking back to uh when you said um be open to share your mistakes or yes. failures perhaps yes. um it also creates an environment where people are free to make mistakes yes that but they don't feel like they have to get it right in the first time that's right Mm -hmm. especially for children it is very very important mm -hmm. i have heard of a, a story where a, 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 a father um was so um well may, maybe the right the right word would be perfectionist but i think it was like over excessive mm -hmm. it was just too perfection so that can be a problem as well and um and they, the children were supposed to learn to play the piano. But every time they uh, they missed a key, he would he would uh, hit them the oh, hand. Really? Yeah, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Or he would um, I for some reason I because I, I heard that story a long time ago. But for some reason, what stuck in my mind that picture of Ben, he would slam the the thing that the uh, that the oh, lid the, the on their hands. The, the yeah, key. onto their hands. So they were terrified of making mistakes. And yeah. they surely they became excellent, but they were terrified at the same time. So yes, you can you can uh, raise little geniuses mm -hmm. to get it right in the first place, but they would be terrified and abused uh, in the process, both yeah. physically and of course in their souls. And and that person who grew up, she was um she was going through a lot of uh, uh, emotional healing and things like that because of her parents. Right. Precisely because of her uh, um, uh, father. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm sure there were many, many other things that, uh, uh, you know, the father was not doing right. But this was one of the things that I remember that she shared. And uh, the way she um, uh, was able to heal, part of her healing was she had to write it down, which, of course, helps. So she would read this. As, as some of the story, I, I thought it was just so heartbreaking. I never forgotten that story. That imagine that as a child, you cannot make a mistake. I mean, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, would you imagine that father never making a mistake when he was a child? Maybe he was raised the same way, but I mean, come on. Yeah. But he gets it right at the first play, first time. Yeah. 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 And 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 also, um, uh, I remember thinking that through uh, okay. The way I experience it in my life, there are um, two ways you can learn, two main ways, in my opinion. You can look at other people's um, lives or mistakes or do's and don'ts, if you wish, and you can learn what to do or what not to do. 
Mm -hmm. These two things you can always learn when you look at someone's life or even just in a certain circumstance that particular what to do or what not to do. And I have found that what not to do is equally important in my learning process as learning Mm -hmm. what to do. Right. Yeah. Because now you know that it leads to maybe somebody talks too much, maybe somebody is too harsh, and then you see that it leads to alienating family members or alienating friends. So you don't have to go through that process. You don't have to make those same mistakes because you watch what other people do wrong yeah. and you don't want to do that. Right. So that is equally as important. And if you are able to share it with someone, because obviously not everybody's present in your life all the time, but you are bringing it up. You know what? When I didn't do this, but I but I did do that, then this is where it led, to, led me. This is mm-hmm. why I don't want you to make the same mistake. Like, for instance, you're talking to your children or grandchildren. That's why I want you to avoid this mistake because I went through that process and it took me a long time to get out of it. Yeah. So that's very important in many, many ways uh, to create an environment where people can openly share uh, what they did wrong. Of course, with the redemption story that yes, and I learned, you know, because otherwise it's like, it's a pity part, like, oh my goodness, my story is horrible. And then, you know, it's trying to one up each other, like my, my, my life is yeah. so much more horrible than yours. Of course, that's not what we're trying to achieve here. But, but what Mark meant and what I fully agree with that um, if you create an environment where you can, even within your family, let alone if you're a leader, you can openly share some of your mistakes yeah. that in the hopes that people will learn or with the idea that people can learn and they can understand that nobody starts it with perfection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That's right. And, and, you are um, mistakes. Go ahead. And, and encourage one and, and other, if, if, even when I I counsel person, I always give uh, encouraging and compliments to that person. I thank him, thank her or him always for their to be open, to be honest, and yes. etc. Et, et et, et but always, and this maybe it's seem like strange to hear, but always I encourage very important people and then a little salt in my says don't do that but i will do that because also famous people need encouraging mm-hmm. even always. when they preach always very um perfect and more than perfect sometimes i wrote a little sentence you did it again very perfect and very gentle and very full of wisdom and then yeah. i do that with a purpose because it's not normal when we have people around us and they give us excellent teachings you know and and then i want to encourage that person too you know always mm-hmm. it's always a good you know? idea yeah yeah i read this uh i read this i think it was a meme actually that even lions need encouragement. <laughs> you know, lions who are always brave, and everybody's like, oh, you know, he's always brave, or she's mm. always brave. She, they don't need to, they seem to just glide in life, everything just fall in place for them. Well, <clears throat> you know, you don't see all the hard work behind it, but it's always good to encourage people, as you said, uh, Alexander, uh, those who are always appear to be strong, those who are always appear to be knowing what they're doing, it, even them it's important for to be recognized for their efforts and for their you know the process that they went through to get to you to get to that message mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right yeah that's very mm-hmm. that's very true in fact the the more a person is a leader um the more they would need to be encouraged i think even because of um the pressure that can that can come with it because of yeah. the demand of I, people always drawing off of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What about them? Like, hey, I'm yeah. giving this advice. I'm not getting any feedback. Is yeah. <laughs> am I helping anyone? Am I? You know what I mean? So yeah, I think I think it's. Very- I, I I yeah I I was so glad on the Super Super Sunday. I mean Super Sunday that Pastor Donna told 
well, we don't pray for houses, we don't pray for, but we pray for each other. Right. And then yeah. was, yeah. I thought, yes, I I didn't hear the whole teaching. I have to uh, go back to hear it from A to Z. But yeah. um, uh, I take some out of it. And she's right. We, we have to pray for our house, our car, because the Lord knows what we need, you know. Yes. But mm -hmm. but it's so important to to pray for each other and to stand in the gap for each other because oh. it's it's so um, how to say that? Um, um, don't uh, for me it's not even common that people do this for us. I'm always will appreciate it, will be thankful of it, that there are people around me who take me with their ad adventure, so to say. They yes. lift me up, and so I have to lift them up too. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my answer. And to yeah. bear fruit, of course, <laughs> well, in the kingdom. Yeah. And be kind well, and creative, open doors for someone. That's a very big one in this time yeah yeah really so, big one for this time i must so, say that uh, because i keep thinking about the woman who was so nasty to you mm -hmm. i must say she has a problem with herself oh of course it's not the I'm, door it's not you yeah, yeah yeah and i realize that now too and uh, like at the time i was i was probably uh uh maybe 18 years old or so you know just starting off on life as an adult kind of time i don't remember exactly but <clears throat> but you know that that could have I could have really taken that wrong and not learned mm -hmm. from it and just said you know what well that's fine I guess I guess women don't want don't want me to open doors and just mm -hmm. let it go but I was raised differently and so yes. I I learned that she was just a one-off she yes. was she was just someone who just didn't like it very much and that was it so yeah, yes it sounds like she felt insulted almost yeah, I think so. I think so. But that's, you know, she probably had her own issues. <laughs> you can really Which is tell just a little I think so. Believe that really, you have so, but you can really tell a person's <laughs> heart, I think, when you open doors for them and how they respond. Um some people I've had I open the door for them and they walk through like that was kind of an expectation because of their position. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's, well. that's a bad one too. That's <laughs> but yeah. I think, I think the other one that really stuck out, I was in Dallas, Texas and uh, I went to, uh, there was a, a taco restaurant in a gas station. And I went there because it got great reviews and I must admit it was amazing. Mm -hmm. But I go in, I went to go in and there was two Mexican people, a father and his son. And I opened the door for them. And they stood there like deer in the headlights in shock. They had no idea what to do. <laughs> nope. Nope. Wow. And, and it was awkward. And yeah. I thought people aren't opening, people aren't opening doors to these people in particular. It seems like it's a cultural thing as well for them, don't you think? Yeah, because they're, they're second class or whatever was going through their mind. And for oh. me, and is is my impression. Mm -hmm. But for me, they're just a, two people who I'm going to open the door for. There was no, not, none of that was going through my mind. Oh, yes. But I could tell by their response that, yeah, it was, it like I said, it got awkward. Because it was like they weren't even going to go. It's like, no, I, I can't yeah. go. You go first, right? Yeah. Wow. I just stood there and I said, please. Mm. Uh, please go. And then they finally went. And yeah, they, I think they almost ran <laughs> ran a little bit <laughs> past me. So I wouldn't kick them or something. I don't know. But it was just it was just that whole weird thing. And because I thought, you should have wow. just said, por favor. Then they understand. Por favor. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe so, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was. Well, that's interesting. That's room. interesting. Depending mm -hmm. on where you're coming from, that's also a factor. But yeah. I think everybody understands the gestures, mm -hmm. even if you don't understand the same language yeah. or coming from different cultures. But um, because kindness is a universal language, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 
Well, and I was thinking. Yes. Actually, go, go, go ahead, Alexander. Go ahead. Yes, I was. I take your points 13 and 14 together, always ready to share your testimony. Mm -hmm. yes, I have a wonderful testimony for a few weeks ago. I walked to the woods and always I say hello or goodbye to persons who passed with me. And then one person said, you don't know, you don't, you don't recognize me. I said, no, I recognize your voice, but not who you are. Here comes the story. Mm -hmm. It was my my um, my director who fired me on a very unjustice way. I was mm -hmm. happy that I always already had forgiven him. So yes. that's one. So I was very polite to him, and he yes. shared something about his business, and he was. He sell his business to another, and he was not, he was not welcome there. Mm. And then I told him, "Oh, I find this so sad for you." And then his eyes become this mm. because he know he did the same with me, but I didn't say um, that. I didn't say that. Yes, I didn't say that. And so I walked further, and I was thinking, "Okay, this was once in a lifetime, but it's good to." share my uh, love and who I am always. Yeah. And, and I told Frida later on that evening, he was very shocked and surprised in one thing. Mm. Yeah. He expected you to bring up all things? Hmm? Did he expect you to bring up the old situation? Yes, I think so. Yes, because it was very rude. Okay. Hmm. What he did was more than rude. Well, that, that was actually the proof that you did forgive him. You could, didn't even recognize him because when you uh, when you are holding a yeah. A, grudge. Yeah, a grudge. Yeah, a grudge. Against somebody. Then you you know how that that man looks. I mean, yeah. <laughs> then comes an explosion. Yeah. So yeah. so what was he seeing? Uh, apparently, he recognized you because yeah. because he so, knew that he didn't treat you fairly. So he 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 recognized you because just as you said. Because yes, and so you must have been always in his mind, especially yeah. after what how they dealt with him. Yes, and one of my my uh, son in law said, Well, did you not say what was happening? <laughs> I said I said I said to my son in law, I it's it's not needed to say that. Exactly. Who I am, who I am is enough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then it was, then my son in law was very silent and said, Wow. <laughs> yeah. Alexander must be Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah. It's, it's it was a real testimony to do this on this way you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and yeah that is that is what pastor don always say forgive and forget yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah and i'm very uh it's a very your points are very up up uplifting mark and it's always good to chew about it and to improve our lives in a better style than before you know yeah, yeah. absolutely i think if i would have spent another hour on it i probably could have doubled the amount or tripled i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but uh it's because re re really i i remember reading a list and I was actually trying to find it just for some inspiration on to kind of get me going. And I, I didn't find it, but I know somewhere I have a list. I think it, it was a hundred, 100 points, uh, advice for life wow. by a lady, by a lady who was a hundred years old and she gave okay. one. So she kind of gave one for yeah. each year of her life. Wow. And, she, and some of them were just so amazing. So beautiful. Wow. And forgiveness was in there, of course. Of you know, course. don't don't hold a grudge. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not worth it. Um, it becomes poison to you, and people don't even realize they're living their life normal. And here you're it's like you just drank a glass of poison over here. 
and yeah. and they don't even know what's going on is you're the one who's holding their resentment not and not them right so yeah it's yeah it's just good to live a life freely forgive and forget yeah as, uh, and, and also said. what i have experienced that you need to trust the holy spirit to work in the her in the heart of that other person who hurt That's you right. Because I have experienced it like um, somebody dealt with me unfairly just recently, very unfairly, in fact. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, something that she was supposed to do, very much supposed to do, even legally, but uh, also as a as a as, as a as a family member, and uh, she didn't do it. She wasn't. She was. She was not going to. I thought, okay, fine. And and we were communicating uh, in writing because I was busy doing something else. And um, so not on the telephone, but in writing. So she gave me a long explanation why she doesn't have time to do that thing that she she broke. She doesn't have time to fix that thing that she broke in mm. my place. I so all I all I responded to, okay, I will do it then. Right. Then I went and did my own thing, and and I and I and I had an, another meeting, and so a couple of hours later, I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> There's this long message from the same person saying, I feel that you are always, what is this word? I feel that you are always accusing me. I didn't accuse you. Yeah. It's your it's your own conscience that accuses That's you. That's right. Yeah. All I said, mm -hmm. okay, fine, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. I didn't, mm -hmm. I could have brought up the law, the contract, mm -hmm. everything else. No, I didn't. No. So I didn't very respond. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but so it's interesting that uh, yeah. I gave the right answer, the answer that she wanted to hear that okay, then I will fix it instead of her. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and yet she felt she condemned. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> it wasn't me who condemned you; it was your own conscience. <laughs> so mm -hmm. interesting that also with your response to your uh, old boss or ex boss, as it was. Um, you didn't condemn him, but his conscience condemned him all along for years, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yes, yeah. I am. And I I'm am. sure she still he still remembers you even after this conversation, after this meeting, because you had the chance to say something and you didn't. No. He he responded he, in he, love. Yes. He he says something where I can react on I and I didn't. Yeah. Of course, I didn't respond, not react. That's right. Yeah, you responded in kindness and in in courtesy, and uh, you didn't react. Mm -hmm. So I was glad that uh, I am the right fan. Right you passed fan. the test. <laughs> yes, I passed the test. Flying yeah. colors. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Any thoughts from you, Frida? Um, any life advices from you, maybe? Well, well, one life advice would be let the past be the past. Mm -hmm. Because it is past. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I meet people who always, uh, some people in counseling always come up with the what they experience as a mm -hmm. little child or as a baby, and then out of it flows a lot of dramas. And uh, you, you know, when you have, when you really have dramas, um, I think it, it, it really should have its place. I mean, okay, Mark is there. Yes, I think. <laughs> just adjusting it. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that moment when I when I was uh uh when, oh, when my yeah. broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, that there, there's something about traumas. Um, some people say they must be treated. They must be. Um, some people have to go through it and all that. I'm not quite sure about it. Um, there must be healing, of course. Uh, but but you um, the, but when you are born again, the past is over. Right. 
So, so that is, I, I think that is much easier to, to just yeah. leave like, like um, a lot of, of thoughts going through my mind right now. But, uh, you know, you know, um, um, counseling people with traumas, I think the best solution is to tell them that when they are born again, they are a new creature and that they are, that the, that the, the old has come and the new has come. <laughs> yeah. So, um, leave the past, the past is maybe a life, um, I thought, life advice. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And as you said, uh, of course, there are 12 step programs and this and that. But if there's an easier way, then maybe it's worthwhile trying that one first. Mm -hmm. Well, well it, um, I want to say something about it some more because uh, there are, of course, situations when children are really sexual, sexually abused in a in the, in the very old, very early um, months of their or early years in their life, uh, um, I think that there, there, there must be some treatment or maybe, uh, yeah, trauma treatment. Uh, of course, but there is, there's also, it has to, it has to be um, finished first after a, a, a time, after a time of therapy or, so I'm not saying uh, therapy is nonsense. Mm -hmm. Understand me. <laughs> yes, because uh, uh, we've been praying and ministering to, for a lot of, um, uh, victims of um, sexual sexual abuse and and other wicked things, evil things. Mm -hmm. But um, there's always healing for um, the the very broken. And it's, <laughs> Yeah. In these uh, early nineties, uh, uh, we had this whole movement, at least in Hungary, but I think around the world, and uh, <clears throat> that came with the spiritual counseling, and basically psychology was mixed mm -hmm. with Christian therapy. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Some elements were. I I know I was I was in it um, as a counselor. And also as a as a, as someone who um, went through my own um, situation as well, and honestly, I realized that um, the more I dwell on the past, because as you said, oh, you have to work through it, and da da da. Mm -hmm. I know they did right. the best they could. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. And that at that mm -hmm. time, thirty years ago, this was the best. Mm -hmm. But I realize that the more I dwell on it, the more things I will find within myself and within my past that somehow harmed me or hurt me or damaged me, if you will. So it just never ends. Mm -hmm. No, no. So I have personal experience. It just never ends. And um, while I don't necessarily say that, as you said um, as well, that, uh, you know, just throw everything out of the window in terms of like, you know, there's no counseling needed. There's no, he, uh, but uh, so it's really, I want to say that I want to be careful when I'm saying this, but I have, I'm talking from my own personal experience. I don't know how much it helped me per, per, um, um, to be honest, the Christian counseling thing that I went through for years. I don't know how much it helped me mm -hmm. because what I know now had I done that at the time, I think I would have gone through the whole process much faster. Yeah. Because nobody mm -hmm. ever told me at that time. Again, I know people with best intentions, but at the time, that was the thing. That's what everybody was doing. That was a new thing. And then new therapy and da -da 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 -da. 
and everybody had to go through some kind of therapy because everybody was suffering from yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so really it's like rejection uh, feeling of inadequacy this that or maybe some serious issues as well sexual abuse of some kind or any kind of abuse or a horrible dysfunctional family i think everybody came from a dysfunctional family to some extent i mean nobody's family yeah, was yeah. so really all i can say is it's like if you're not in therapy then then you have to be so it's like it's almost like everybody has to be on therapy so that was the sort of like yeah. the idea in a way yeah. of the atmosphere and it was normal because everybody was on therapy we didn't call it therapy well i think it was like a counseling sort of thing i think mm -hmm. we call it counseling and uh it helped me because it gave me a lot of information of how to deal with certain situations, how to deal with, as a counselor, how to deal with certain kind of people with certain kind of backgrounds or this and that. So it helped me in terms of um, information, but I would not do it now. And I wouldn't advise anybody to go through that now because I have find a better way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to be open to learn new things. Yeah. Um, even yeah. within you know, certain methods, whatever works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it has to do also with um, uh, forgiveness, what Alexander was talking about, because he, he, he really did not remember that that uh, boss, <laughs> ex-boss. Yes. So I think... Um, when you forgive, God does something with your um, memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that Maybe. was a possibility, but I think uh, a mind is a little more complex than that. I fully agree with what it you is. said. But it is. Let's take someone from, from my experience when counseling people, let's take someone who have been so severely uh, abused. Yeah that they actually suppress their own memory. So they literally have no memory mm -hmm. of years of their lives. Yes. So how do you do with that? You see what I'm saying? So there's a little more complex than that because then how do you yeah. do yes, it? Yes, it is. We taught at the time, and I have dealt with so yeah. many people like that. The way we were taught at that time was that you have to know your past. Right. You have to dig in. You have to find out what happened mm -hmm. to you. You have to find out who that person was in order to forgive them, in order to forgive right. your past. Yeah, now, I don't believe that anymore. Right. Okay. Because the Bible says that, and this is this was the scripture, that um, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Correct. Right. Amen. But I think it was incorrect in that particular um, type of situation. Because right. I don't believe that everybody has to discover what happened to them. Sometimes it's better that they don't know. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You see, and Correct. God can still heal. Me. And God can still heal those memories that are still suppressed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, digging in is really, um, you have to leap through the whole, whole thing again. You yeah. do. <laughs> and you see people, you know, adult people going back to their childhood and they actually behave like children. So that's scary. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many over the years. Yeah. So I know it's a, it's a very complex, a very com I never it did it alone. I did it with uh, supervised uh, professionals. I must have to put it out there just to be on the safe side. So, but I've seen a lot and I know yeah. these things are real. So I'm not... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not diminishing people's experiences. I'm just saying if there's a better way, then I have experienced there is a better way. At one point, I had to decide. Okay, you know what? I have in. I am in. I have enough of digging, 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 mm -hmm. and it just yeah. brings up new things, and it just never seemed to end. It's, yeah. it's almost it seems like my whole adulthood, I was working through issues from my childhood. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. This is just. I mean, come on. You know, yeah. again, what you said, what you said, Frida, it's almost like you're looking backwards all the time and, and you don't let the past be the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that you have to dig through all those garbage. No, no. You know, in order to be free of it. Because then you can start and say, okay, so finally, I know what happened to me. Finally, I know who did it. And, and now I'm, I'm forgiving that person, that situation. Yes, yes. Yes. I don't believe you have to go through that. I believe you no. can forgive and God can take care of your memories or your suppressed memories. 
Yes. And that's what I had to do that at one point I said, you know what, it's enough. It's enough. I don't feel yeah. like I'm going very further, you know? Yeah. And I said, you know what, I have to look for for the future. I have to look yeah. ahead instead yeah. of looking back. So I know I know I had to make a conscious decision. I don't care whatever happened. I don't care about all these things. I want to move forward. And yeah. then I just focused right. on the now. And I focused on the future, and that is what really helped me. Yes. Yes, that's that's the best you can. So I'm talking it. from my experience. I'm not giving medical advice, it's just to yeah, put it yeah. out to be on the safe I side. Understand. But I'm saying it from experience. This is what yeah. helped me. Yeah. yeah. But I must add that since we talk about people who are coming out from traumatized situations, you have to want to be healed. Because I have also seen people who were very happy to get attention with right. all their horrible situations, with all their horrible past. I'm not doubting that they went through all these things and things were done to them. But 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 you have to have the focus that you want to be healed. You want mm -hmm. to be well. You don't just seek for attention because you didn't get the attention when you were little and now you're getting it when you're adult with your horrible stories that in fact are true, but the motivation is wrong. So I have seen people who kept telling stories about stories about you know about their childhood, one more horrible than the other, just to get attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both male and female, it's not gender specific. So mm -hmm. your, as you said, pa let past let the past be in the past. You have to want to get well. Yeah. 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 And you have to want to leave the past in the past and move on. For a better life, yeah. And uh, so that's 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 something that I wanted to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we can we can we can do a whole st whole story about this, but uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. yes. And and and, and I think what no. oh, sorry, I'm sorry. No, no. What 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 is what is what is um? I think we we should prepare in Europe, especially maybe that there will be a lot of people in the future that need healing from uh, yeah. war um, uh, experiences. So we have to mm -hmm. we have to be an army that that really knows how to heal the people. Mm -hmm. I believe that because because people will come like this in masses. Yes. I mean oh, yes. come to unprecedented before. Yes. Therefore God is going to heal them like that. Literally. Right. From yeah. one to the next. That's oh, what I yes. think. Because we don't have no longer time for counseling. No. Yeah. yeah. So that, I think that's why it's going to happen. He's God is going yeah. to heal them and he's going to heal them physically, mentally, and he's also going to heal their memories. Yes. Right. That's that's what that's yeah. what we always do. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. but that's what, what's going to happen, I think. Yeah. I believe yeah. it's going to happen like this. Yeah. Like yeah. literally from one minute to the next. Yeah. If I can because share a story, we have no time to come for counseling. We have no time, and we have no yeah. capacity. So it right. has to be supernatural. If I can share a story to confirm what you're saying, sure. I just recently listened to a testimony of a young lady who came to Christ, and in part of her testimony is when she was five years old, um, a man started to abuse her, a uh, sexually abuse her. And 10 years later, her mother married that man. And now not he's continued the abuse, but now he was in the house. So, the mother didn't know? Huh? The mother didn't know? I don't think so. I think she was embarrassed and it started when she was so young, she didn't even know how to process it. And it just carried on. Um, and uh, she's now... At the time, at the recording of her testimony, she was one year saved, came to Christ, married and, and had children, but um, she was, she's still young, 20 or so, whatever. I'm just get, guessing. Uh, but um, she said, uh, within that year of being saved, the Holy Spirit came to her and God said to her, you need to forgive that man. And she said, I don't know how. I don't even know how to, where to even to begin to yeah. forgive that man. Yeah. And immediately the Holy Spirit showed her 
the spirits behind what that man was doing. And she saw it and had revelation of it and recognized it. And then the Holy Spirit said, and I created that man and I still have a plan and a purpose for him. And she was able to forgive him. He, wow. The Holy Spirit gave her the revelation and understanding that she could genuinely do it one year saved mm -hmm. wow. with all that abuse from five wow. till she said she was 16 when, when her mother married the man and it continued on. So I don't know for how many years, even after that. Wow. Um, and yet she was able to, within one year, able to forgive him. Wow. Genuinely. Wow. Yeah. That's so, beautiful. So that was quick, right? Yes. Quick. Yeah. So that's, you know, and so even it's faster than actually... that, but that's just an example of, of, of quickness. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. I like, I like that, that, um, when she said, I don't know how to forgive him. I think yeah. that's very, very genuine. And I, I know many people struggle with it. You, you don't yeah. know how to forgive, Yeah. but the Holy Spirit will let you know how to that's forgive. Right. That's right. And will guide mm -hmm. you into all truth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And even uh, Corey Ten Boom had a very yeah, similar uh -huh. testimony yes. of that. You probably know it, but maybe yes, for those yes. for those who don't, just very quickly, she uh, was in the Holocaust, and she was then afterward teaching people how to forgive, uh, and that we should forgive. And then the very man that turned her family in, uh, and she was the only survivor, I believe, in her family. Yes. Everyone was killed. <laughs> Uh, because of that man turning them in. Um, and he walked up to her and said, I'm the man who turned in your family. And in that moment, as she was describing, she says, although I was teaching people that they should forgive and how, in that moment, she, she couldn't. She actually said, I could not forgive that man. Mm -hmm. Then she said, Holy Spirit, and the power of God came into her and her hand went out and genuinely she was able to forgive that man. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I, I, again, it took God to do it. You know, I, she just, she didn't have. Yes. It. Yes. Yeah. I knew that story. That's yes. God yes. did. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought, I thought she met one of the guards. Yes. 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 yes she did. I she think did. it was one of the guards. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm just going by what I remember. I thought that's what yeah. it was. But I've been wrong. It, before, could, it could have been another time. story, but I remember she actually met with okay. one of the guards, one of the okay. Nazis. Yeah, okay. and uh, she remembered that very guard was was uh, was uh, torturing her and her sister. Yeah, and, uh, but, 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 yeah, but she, yeah, very no. horribly, very horribly. Right. And that she was absolutely frozen to see that guard okay. in a very different situation after the war, of course. Right. But nevertheless, I mean, that could have been as, as another story that you mentioned. But this one I remember because I read it, read it in her book. But powerful, my goodness, really. Yeah. Yeah. And when you oh, yeah. hear stories like this and like the other one that you uh, mentioned about the young lady, it, it's like, you know, how can you not forgive people who, I don't know, destroy your property or, you know, didn't hold the door mm -hmm. for you? It's like, this seems like nothing. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that it, I think it's um yeah maybe 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 I can come up with a life hack with this. <laughs> there are I, this is just one one um one uh, um um points that I would say that it can it can actually go very far. But whenever you are in a problem, just think about other people who are in a worse problem, and then maybe your problem doesn't seem, or maybe mm -hmm. your you know upsetness doesn't seem that much justified yeah so um the way i would phrase it i saw it in a movie that somebody was like oh this 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 and just you know raining on one of her friends and she goes and then the friend was like she had so much bigger problem than what this person was just um raining on her about and she said she just suddenly turned around and instead of going into detail she just said you know there are people with real problems right so that's, that puts in things into perspective in media. And she shut up because she realized that yes, yeah. what maybe what I'm saying is not all that big of a deal. But um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So real real people with real problems. So yeah. maybe that's something that uh we can think about sometime.
when we think our problem is the better or is the bigger and the biggest. You, you, yes, you know, our God is so good and so gracious and so gentle. I remember in the first 10 years of my Christian life, I was in the church and the pastor's wife was watching me and years watching, you? watching me watching how you. I uh, okay. grow up yeah. and how I... <laughs> I heard watching. No, 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 no. Yeah. And and then we um, we lost each other, and then uh, years later we come together. Um, she was a very old lady, and the first thing she told me, "The Lord did a miracle in you." That's mm -hmm. the first thing she told me. The Lord did a wonderful miracle in you. She was so called. She was the um, the dementia. Uh, Yes. But but oh. this this is what she remember, and then there was something in spirit we can communicate further, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. And 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 that's really my testimony. The old is passed away, mm -hmm. and I have received a brand new life, and so God and I can build in me a brand new life and future and that's what what's necessary for all of us that we have a new life born out of god hallelujah and and i'm so grateful hallelujah. that he gave his son and he gives his life for us all mm -hmm. and so i have a brand new life Thanks to yes. Jesus, who did this all, and He deserves all the honor about this. I really yeah. serious about it because if I didn't met the Lord, my Savior, then I was not this person who I am now. Absolutely, it's all about him, you know. Absolutely. It's well, all... we can just do. We can just go into the communion, and you can lead us into the communion. That's I have okay. my hands. Yes, we have to. Feel the big her breath. We yeah. have. Oh, that's beautiful. Breath. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The cup of blessing, when it's we bless, this is not a communion of the blood of Christ. The bread of which we break. <clears throat> this is not the communion mm -hmm. of the body of Christ, for we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can lift it up. Sorry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That you gave your life, mm -hmm. that you, that your body was uh, torn apart for us, and that in eating it, um, we are part of you. We are part of your body, and uh, even even when we taste it and chew it, that we know that our body is is um, mm -hmm. part of you. <clears throat> that our body is healed, that our body is strengthened, quickened by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for doing this for, for us. We never can thank you enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Let's eat that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, go on. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you that in eternity. There will be praise and worship because you gave your life 
you shed all your blood for us. Not one drop was left. Thank you for the power of your blood mm -hmm. that protects us, that um, speaks for us, so that we know we are justified and righteous mm -hmm. because of that blood. Thank you that mm -hmm. we are um, that that we are partakers of this uh, testament that you gave us. So we bless the cup and we uh, drink it because of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. Amen. Any last words? Open doors. Open doors, yes. Open doors. <laughs> Do you know that this, for this whole year, the word is open doors? Oh, is it? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So Amen. in more ways than one, open doors. <laughs> open doors. Yeah. Okay, so for next time, Alexander and uh, Frida, would you like to prepare some life advices? Yes, yes, we do. Whatever yeah. works for you, whatever, however many, you can come with 200, you can come with two, maybe <laughs> maybe one or two, but... <laughs> yes, yes, we do two together. I think yes. it's yeah. good to hear from other people, also from different walks of life and from different yeah. countries, what you found very um, useful in your life, something that worked for you. Yeah, okay. The yes. personal, the better. Mm -hmm. It. Yes, we do. Wonderful. And we won't see you next time, right, Mark? Uh, no, I think I will be here. And then. Okay, how wonderful. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. That's very good news. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And thank you for being so diligently paying attention to every word we said. And hopefully, you are able to glean something out of you, out of the uh, uh, message that you heard today all the advices and at least some of them you can utilize in your everyday life. So next week, Tuesday, we are going to meet again. Okay. Yes. God mm -hmm. bless you. You have a lovely week. We are mm -hmm. going to meet on uh, on the GMS, don't we? Yeah. Isn't it on weekend or the 17th? Saturday. 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 Oh. Yeah. No, it's late or it's now? It's, it's now. Yes, it's 17th. Yes. Yes, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Right? 17. Yeah, Saturday. So we'll see you again soon. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. Love you guys.